In the brutal calculus of survival, what weighs more, the mind of a single, powerful king, or the unbreakable will of a disciplined army? The African savanna is a kingdom forged in conflict, a land of ancient dynasties and contested thrones. Deep within the woodland, a ruler holds court. He is Pan Troglodytes, the chimpanzee. A king whose calm is backed by devastating strength, his intelligent eye surveying a world he commands through sheer presence. But beyond his shadowy realm, a rival empire thrives under the open sun. On the vast plains, an army marches. They are the Olive Baboons, Papio Anubis, a disciplined legion moving as one. Their power is not in solitary might, but in overwhelming numbers, their ranks guarded by soldiers armed with canines that gleam like daggers. This is a collision of philosophies, the cunning warrior king versus the disciplined army, individual power versus collective force. When these two empires meet on the borderlands of their kingdoms, the prize is the ultimate resource, survival. But when the dust settles, who will claim the throne? To answer this, we must first look to the fighters themselves. We begin with the warrior king. A dominant male chimpanzee can stand nearly 4 feet tall, a formidable silhouette of up to 150 pounds of dense, powerful muscle. He is built for explosive power, his disproportionately long arms housing a biological engine of pure force, several times stronger than a human's. This strength is a weapon in itself, capable of snapping thick branches with a contemptuous crack. But his arsenal is deeper. A bite force of 1300 psi can crush bone, while his mind allows him to weaponize his environment, hurling heavy rocks with lethal accuracy. His defense is a terrifying offense, his thick hide and muscle providing natural armor against all but the most determined of foes. Across the savanna, the legionary stands in stark contrast. A large male olive baboon weighs up to 90 pounds, a more compact frame designed for endurance and speed. He is a soldier, not a king. Individually smaller, his power isn't in his size, it's in his armament. His primary weapon is a set of vicious, two-inch canines, longer and sharper than a lion's, used for piercing and slashing. His speed is his shield, reaching 30 miles per hour in a blur of motion, his agility allowing him to dodge and weave with lightning reflexes. But his ultimate armor is not skin deep. It is the troop itself, a living, coordinated shield where the strong defend the whole. In a tale of the tape, the chimpanzee's individual power is undeniable. But while one chimp weighs 150 pounds, the combined weight of the baboon legion can exceed 5,000. It is a battle of brute strength against numerical superiority, of crushing power against piercing weaponry. The chimpanzee's advantages are raw force and strategic thought, but this strength is metabolically expensive. In a prolonged battle, his power becomes his weakness. The baboon's power is multiplicative. Individually, he is outmatched. But his speed, weaponry, and flawless coordination create a force that can overwhelm even the strongest of kings. The stage is set for a clash of titans. But a fighter is defined not just by their weapons, but by the arena in which they fight, and the cause for which they bleed. The battleground is the savanna woodland ecotone of Central Africa, a contested borderland where the chimpanzee's dense forest gives way to the baboon's open grassland. For the chimp, the woodland is a fortress of shadows and tactical opportunities. Here, he lives a life of quiet contemplation, using his intelligence to fish for termites, yet ever watchful, even a simple drink of water taken with caution. This is a kingdom of stealth, ruled by a thoughtful monarch. But out on the plains, there is no place to hide. The baboon's empire is ruled by the tyranny of distance and sight. Survival here is about constant vigilance and collective might. They move as a disciplined legion, a tide of olive drab fur flowing across the grasslands, with powerful males standing guard on the perimeter, a living, defensive wall. Their life is one of raw, aggressive readiness, their daggers always ready for combat. For a time, these empires exist in a state of tense awareness. But the delicate peace is fragile. The chimp, patrolling the woodland edge, discovers the footprint of an invader. His calm vanishes. The invasion is detected. Miles away, the lead baboon halts, his ears catching the faint, distant drumming of the chimpanzee's territorial display. The enemy is identified. The board is set. A clash is no longer a possibility, it is an inevitability. The trigger is a prize of immense value, a single, enormous fig tree, isolated in the contested zone, its branches laden with thousands of ripe fruits. In the harsh economy of the savanna, this is not just food. It is a treasure, a source of power worth fighting, and dying, for. 
As the Chimps Elite War Party emerges to claim this strategic asset, the Baboon Legion descends from the planes with the same goal. Five Chimps meet the vanguard of 80 Baboons. The air crackles. In the eyes of the Chimp Alpha, calculation. In the eyes of the Baboon General, an unblinking glare of pure challenge. A deafening scream of defiance is met by a wall of bared teeth. The battle for the throne is about to begin. Before the first blow is struck, we must understand the minds behind the muscle, the professions that have shaped these combatants. The chimpanzee is a warrior. His life is one of political intrigue, territorial patrols, and calculated warfare. He is a specialist in violence, his movements purposeful and silent. But the warrior's greatest asset isn't just his strength. It's his mind, a mind capable of strategy, communication, and deadly innovation. We see it in the coordinated hunt, where silent signals and flanking maneuvers turn a foraging party into an elite special forces unit. They set ambushes, use branches as clubs, and exploit every advantage. This is their secret weapon, tactical thought. They wage war with intelligence. The baboon's world is fundamentally different. And so is its profession. The baboon is a survivor. Hardened by life in the open, his primary role is not to conquer, but to protect. His aggression is a shield for the troop, his vigilance unwavering. When intimidation fails, the Baboon Legion reveals its true secret weapon, a strategy of overwhelming force. Against a predator like the leopard, they don't scatter, they attack. It is called, mobbing, a coordinated, selfless swarm from all sides, a relentless and disorienting assault that can defeat one of the savannah's deadliest hunters. Their weapon is unity. Two fighters, two minds. The chimpanzee's intelligence is inventive and individualistic. It solves problems, creates tools, and passes on knowledge, as a young chimp learns to fish for termites by watching an elder. The baboon's intelligence is social and instinctual. It is a hardwired military protocol of communication and cooperation, perfected over millions of years to ensure the survival of the legion, as they form a living barrier to cross a dangerous river. It is the calculating mind of the warrior king versus the unbreakable discipline of the legion. In the final showdown, which mentality will prevail? The standoff breaks. The alpha chimpanzee, in a terrifying display, lets out a deafening roar, a declaration of war. The baboon generals answer with a chorus of guttural barks, and the front line surges forward. But the chimp's first move is one of intelligence. Snatching a heavy branch, he swings it like a brutal war club, the devastating impact sending the first attacker tumbling. The show of force is meant to shatter morale, and for a moment, the baboon charge falters. But this is not an ordinary foe. A piercing bark rallies the troop, and they deploy their ultimate strategy, the swarm. They flow around the small chimp party, attacking from all sides. For every baboon a chimp smashes away, three more flank him, their canines flashing in lightning-fast raids. The warrior kings are an island of power in a relentless sea of numbers. Soon, the grim math of attrition takes its toll. The alpha chimp stands over his fallen enemies, but he is wounded, his breathing heavy. His warriors are exhausted, their immense strength fading against the baboon's endless reserves. It is then that the warrior becomes a king. His eyes dart from the endless wave of attackers to his battered family. The tree is not worth annihilation. With a series of sharp boots, he gives the order, a strategic retreat. Fighting their way backward, the chimps move as one unit toward the safety of the woodland, where the baboon's numbers are less effective. The legion, barking victoriously, halts at the forest's edge and swarms the prized fig tree, claiming their reward. The battle is over. The result is symbolic, yet undeniable. 
On the open field, the disciplined legion has proven that coordinated numbers can overwhelm even the greatest individual strength. The chimpanzee Alpha lost the tree to save his family, a king's choice. In the great kingdom of the savannah, there is no single, permanent throne. Power is a tide that ebbs and flows. Today, the throne belongs to the army. But from the shadows of the forest, the eyes of the warrior king are watching, not defeated, but learning, adapting, and waiting. The war for survival, is never truly over.